guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be going further into our series of videos on Lost Wax Casting and the casting process and we're going to be covering wax carving and creating your wax model. So we're, uh, so we were given some copies of a book by Hiroshima Suyaki uh, courtesy of Art Artisan Ideas Publishing out of the States. Uh, so we're going to be going through the books today, our basic wax modeling and our advanced wax modeling picking a uh, process for you and following that along while showing you some tips and tricks we've also picked up along the way. So let's get into it. Uh, so like I said, we're going to be focusing in on this book here. Uh, and for those of you that have not tried it before, uh, it gives a nice example of all the different kinds of waxes uh, that you can use and that you can be playing with uh, depending on your project. So you have here illustrated in the top corner your ring tubes uh, that come in varying shapes depending on what you want to start with. Uh, you have your hard blocks that you can carve uh, whatever you like out of. You have your wires, you have your thin sheets. Uh, so there's also some techniques in the book that illustrate uh, types of items that you could do that are hollow, that are useful to do in sheets. Uh, but basically whatever project you want to do, there's a type of wax uh, that is best uh, for that project. Let's get on to the tool section. Book, it illustrates a lot of the different tools that can be utilized for wax carving. Of course, when you first start out, you don't need every single one of these tools, but it's nice to have at least a few of them on hand when starting out your first project. Uh, so the basic tools we found, uh, for hand tools anyways, that you're gonna be using are some nice carving tools, like these ones here, are useful for carving and sculpting uh, your piece, depending on the shape of the tool, it will of course do a different shape in a different process. Uh, you're going to need some different files for carving. So these files are different from a regular file that you would use specifically on your metal. These files are what we would call non-loading files. So these files will not gum up or should not gum up as much as a typical file would because of the spacing. So along with your files and your different carving tools, you'll also want to be utilizing a saw. Uh, of course, you're gonna be using a saw with every other type of jewelry that you do, but you're going to want to invest in different saw blades. So when working with wax, you have saw blades that are called skip tooth blades. So again, much like the files, uh, they're specifically made for the wax, so that in the process it doesn't gum up uh, and you can actually cut through properly. So along with these tools, you'd also want to potentially be using some heat. For that, traditionally, you'd be using an alcohol lamp like this one because it produces a clean flame, which means your wax won't be interrupted by soot and other particles uh, that you could then incorporate in your wax. To go along with your alcohol lamp, you would be using a piece like this, which is a spatula, which comes in varying shapes. Uh, depending on what you would like to do. Uh, and this would be what you would use for instances where you need heat to melt and move the wax. So another option other than the alcohol lamp would be to use an electronic wax pen, which this is here. So we use this when we're doing a lot of sprueing and putting all of our wax models together, as well as when we're creating our wax models. So this does a even heat and you can adjust the temperature to whatever you want to be able to just make the wax slightly move or to make the wax completely liquid and build it up from there. Uh, this is going to be very useful in the project that we're going to be doing today as we're going to be uh, moving the liquid wax to create our model. So today we're going to be focusing on uh, the project on page 79, which, which is a wax buildup ring. Uh, so this is probably going to be one of the easier uh, processes to do as it's simply just the process of melting down some of your wax uh, and building it up on your ring mandrel or uh, on your other surface to create the pattern that you wanted. So for this project, you're going to need your uh, alcohol lamp along with your spatula or a wax pen along with some scissors, paper, tape, a pen, uh, and then we can get started. So the first thing you're going to do is create a paper loop that is slightly wider than the ring you want to make uh, and just slightly longer than the size so that you, your paper overlaps a little bit. Go ahead and design your ring from here, but remember the more intricate and more spaces your design has, uh, the more proficient and skilled you'll have to be in sprueing your piece so that you have a successful cast. And now we're going to start with the heat. So of course you could use your alcohol lamp for this, but for us we're going to be using our wax pen uh, and we're also going to be using blue wax. Uh, so blue wax has enough uh, flex to it that it won't break when we try and take it off the paper. Uh, and it also has a decent temperature point so that we can work with it well enough uh, and it won't flow too much as we apply it. Yeah. 
This technique is great for organic forms, but you have to be able to compromise as you can only physically do what the wax will allow, and occasionally it won't flow exactly as you like it. The next part is going to get quite repetitive as Dan is going to go over all of the lines of the de design that he created uh, and getting the wax to a decent thickness, somewhere around one and a half millimeters, uh, but basically to a point where the metal will be able to reliably flow through the piece. Once you have everything to a thickness that you like, it's time to do your last minute touch-ups and start to get ready for the paper removal process. Taking off the paper is a really simple process, you just need a small tool to be able to get in between uh, the paper and slowly peel away at the parts that are stuck down. Uh, once the paper is removed, you can go back in with your electric pen or your spatula uh, and just tidy up those little places uh, that don't look appropriate to the ring and maybe little pools uh, that got stuck to the paper that don't really uh, fit to the design. Once you've made your adjustments, you can put the ring back onto the mandrel uh, and you will be going over the ring with a light flame. So that can be from a lighter, that can be from your alcohol lamp, whatever you have on hand. Uh, and you're doing this to give the ring a kind of even uh, surface to it and kind of uh, uh, level out anything that you may have missed. The reason that you're putting it back on the mandrel is because the mandrel is still cool uh, and this will keep the wax a little bit cooler so nothing melts completely when it's hit with the flame. Overall, this is a great project for beginners as it allows you to reclaim some of your wax as well as to just be able to play with the wax. Uh, and it's a rather short build as this piece only took about 30 to 40 minutes from the very beginning to completion. So we'd like to thank Artisan Ideas Publishing for sending us a courtesy copy of these wax modeling books. Uh, they've, it's been quite a fun look to go through them and look at the techniques. Uh, if you guys have enjoyed this uh, project, definitely check it out. There will be a link in the description box. If you'd like to see more wax modeling videos, please, do, please give this video a like and leave a comment down below. Uh, please remember to always like and subscribe if you like any of our videos and leave a comment if you have any questions. Uh, we'll see you guys next time.